I represent the good people of Niger North. Uh, Mr. Nomini, let me join my other colleagues in congratulating you. I will be very direct in two questions I have for you. I have seen you qualified first as a medical doctor and then became an international investment or financial expert. Now, how can you help this country to attract investment in the area of our health facility so that we can reduce or bring to the barest minimum the current outflow of medical tourists from this country with its attendant you know, <coughs> uh, pressure on our foreign exchange given your wealth of experience in both the medical treatment and then the pharmaceutical area. Now, the second question I have for you is, given your expertise as a financial analyst, and if you look at the document you submitted as tax document, do you see that document as appropriate for you to carry out an analysis of somebody giving you his tax record. Thank you. Senator Ben Bruce. Senator Ben Murray Bruce, Biles East. Okay, Chuko, I, I have read your CV, and I just want to make a few observations and ask you a question. Historically, ministers that I've been in contact with in the past five, six, seven governments say the right things when they seek public office. Once they get into office, they stop reading, they stop communicating, and they become reactionary. Nigerians, by nature, are very industrious, they're very creative, but the government, the government never encourages creativity. Let's give you an example. Automobile policy of Nigeria. We are assembling cars today. The technology for the cars we are assembling today are 60, 70 years old. The automobile industry are making cars of the future, but there's no car being assembled that is less than 50 years old in terms of basic technology. So that is the fundamental problem. So the rest of the world will dump their factories in Nigeria and we will pollute the environment because there was no thought process in making this work. If I sat down with my colleagues and I say to them as an example that the car of the future is hydrogen or electric, they won't understand what I'm talking about. But that is the way of the future. Government has to lead. The question, the question is this. The question is this. Government, what do you intend to do to lead a nation to prosperity? What would you do if you were Minister of Finance or Trade and Industry in terms of having money for research and development? What would you do to help the people and not oppress them and leave us in the 17th century? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleague. My name is Bin Thomas Igarwa. I have two questions, I think one of which has been answered. Do you think the administrative control of the foreign exchange represents the best options in the management of the Naira exchange rate in view of the implication on domestic production rate, investments and capital inflow? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. My name is Senator Remy Tin Oluremi Tinubu, representing Lagos Central Senatorial District. I think I'm going to toe the line of Senator um, Ben Bruce. 
Um, I will welcome you to the government of change. And um, a lot of people struggle for us to have a change in government. And one of the things we see that when ministers come in, you see all the people you see here, we all have one qualification or the other. But we represent the people. A ministerial appointment is also a political appointment. Someone once said management is technical and leadership is inspirational. You represent a state which is Abia State and that is the state where Senator Baribi comes from. We as the, you know, um, Senator Gwaji mentioned that APC didn't have any goal or what did you say? We didn't have plan. We do have plans. We didn't have what? We do have a lot of policies. I said, can you, I have the, I have the floor. I do have the floor. Can you just give me a minute? I said, forget about the question. I, can you, can you, Mr. President? Distinguished Senator Remitimbo, can you put a question? Okay. Put Thank you so much. I will put the question, but I just want to lay some foundation. It's out of that, but we, we believe that being a government of change, the people's expectations are high. And then we see his CV is quite robust. But we want an appointment, which is a ministerial appointment, to work with the people. You take what is wrong with Abia State and then take it to the Federal Executive Council. I know you understand me. I see you are nodding. And that is what we want. Please, please. And that is it's going to answer to that. It's a question. It, are you going to answer to that? That's the question. Thank you. Distinguished, distinguished Senator Remy, I'm, very, I'm doing my best to protect you, but we need that question now. Thank you, Mr. President. He does understand the question. I want to see, I want you to tell this hello chamber what you have for the people of Abia State. Are you going to be a, a, a what? Wait, wait. It's part of Nigeria. They all come from different parts. So we want to see what you will have for the people that you will take to the Federal Executive Council. I congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Stella Adwa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, my dear colleagues. Uh, Mr. Nomini, congratulations. My questions are a few, just about two. One is uh, Southeast region, the economy of Southeast region. As you are aware, we are landlocked. And so several things has to be put in place for Southeast to have an economy. My question is, do you think with all the potentials that we have in Southeast and with all the limitations that there should be an economy within the zone? If so, what should you put in place? Or rather, what can you put in place for there to be Southeast economy? taking into consideration all the potentials. That's one. Two, what do you think we need to have a bottom-up economic growth in Nigeria? If you take, for instance, all the nations that have really emerged as economic giants, what do you think they have done that created the enabling environment for them to have holistic bottom-up economic growth. And I think we need to have that. Finally, when it comes to rural development, clearly we lack facilities and infrastructure for that. My question is, if you are supposed, if you get to the federal cabinet, what would be your direct policy directive in that regards to ensure that our rural communities have the requisite facilities and infrastructure 
that will create the enabling environment for the economic growth. Thank you, Mr. President.